Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Okay, we are gonna film a high vis stimulator pattern. Um, this is a pattern that's a little bit different from a regular stimulator just because it's got a little bit extra wing, the tail's a little bit different. Um, but the cool thing is we will still show you how to tie a wing in on a stimulator. It's pretty easy. Um, I've got a Daiichi 1260 in size 8. I like this a lot better than the TMCO 200R because it's got a really nice wide hook gap. The 200R could kind of eat that up. I've got uni thread in camel or brown. And I'm just going to start by just dressing my hook. And because I'm going to tie in my, the, the tail kind of on the curve, I'm going to take my hook and bend or put it down in the vise. And that's about where I'm going to tie my tail in. So one main difference between this fly and a stimulator is I'm going to use a biot for the tail. I'm going to take a little pinch of dubbing and I'm going to put that right here at the back. And that's what I'm going to use to separate my biot tails. So when you tie these tails in, just like a print stamp, you tie them out so that the points are facing outward. What kind of trash are people saying? Not much yet. There we go. So that's how our, our tail is going to be. As long as it's somewhat split, they don't have to be perfect. Use their own scissors. Okay, now I'm going to put my hook back in a normal position in the vise. And I'm going to reverse palmer this. And I like to use wire. So, we've tied in the UTC small wire. I'm just using olive. The color's really not going to show up very much. And then the body's going to be made out of this Nature Spirit hairs mask dubbing. So, I'm just going to use a gold color for the back and probably a natural hair's ear color for the front. So, I'm going to dub it up. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this forward and see how I'm just kind of gradually tapering this. Get a little bit fatter as you go up. Okay, so we've got our body built. Um, and I'm just going to use this. What color was this? This is... Grizzly Olive? Grizzly Olive, but it's like... Or was it a golden straw? I don't know what color this one is. It's it's pretty cool. It's kind of like a greenish yellowish. And even though I have a size 8 hook, I'm not going to use a size 8 hackle on this fly. I'm probably going to use like a size 14 for the back and maybe a 12 for the front. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. There we go. So I'm going to tie this in so that when I start to wrap it, the shiny side, the shiny side of the hackle stays forward. So as you can see, I wrap that in and I, I like to tie it in just like I'm going to start wrapping it in the same orientation. So now I'm just going to take a few wraps close together right there at the front. And now I'm going to palmer that back. right about there and now I'm going to take my wire and that's what I'm going to use to tie that hackle off now for durability I put two wraps of wire right in the same exact place right there you can barely see it 
And then as I go up through this hackle, I'm going to kind of wiggle my thread and I shouldn't trap many fibers down. And yes, it's a dry fly and I'm using wire, but it's really not going to add enough weight to make a difference. Okay. Okay, so I've trimmed off my my excess hackle and my wire. Stimmy's about halfway built now. So Nature Spirit has a st stimulator deer hair. They, it's marketed specifically for stimulators. And I think this is like a goldish color. We'll put the exact color in the recipe. But I never put mine back in the package, so I just write uh, what it is. Nature Spirit Stimmy Deer. Grab my uh, hair stacker and I will grab an appropriate amount for a fly like this. Kind of have to eyeball that. So this is how much I took off and that might be a little bit too much. But by the time I brush it out with my comb, it, I might pull out enough fibers for it to be just right if I did it right. So as you can see, this is the stuff that I pulled out. That's going to make your fly sink because that's the under fur that absorbs water. Yeah, so I think we're, we're good here. So I stacked that. And I'm going to pull that out so that it goes right about maybe just a little bit longer than the body and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this with my left hand and I'm only using 8 dot thread 72 denier to be exact and so I can't really put a lot of force on this deer hair and I might actually break it so with every wrap I'm I'm pushing down just a little bit more now to lock this deer hair in this is my trick for elk hair caddis as well is now I'm going to grab a few hanks in front, grab a few more and wrap down until I go all the way up through that. Okay. Now it should be pretty easy to separate the butts from the tips again. And that's, that's tied in really well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this off at an angle because the stimulator has an angled head. So I'm going to come in here with my scissors about like this. I gotta get my fingers in here to make sure I get it all right. So about like that is how we're gonna trim that off. And we've got a few little stragglers. All right. Now one of the things that I've been doing lately is uh, just putting an overwing on top of this wing to add visibility. So I'm just using hairline para post material and this is white so now I'm going to just wrap up over those butts kind of cinch those down and uh, tie in this little hive is dealio and I'm going to double it over all right and I'm going to cut that the same length as my hair and I keep grabbing those crappy scissors. And you can see how the, the parapost material kind of gets matted down. So you can come in here just with a little comb and, and brush it out. And that adds, you know, some buoyancy. And it looks like I got a little squirrely with my deer hair on that side. But anyway, it adds a little bit of buoyancy to your fly and a lot of visibility. And I'm actually going to come in here and trim some of these hairs out. Just a tiny little bit so that the hair stay right on top of the body. Okay, now we're ready for the head. So I'm gonna pick a little bit bigger piece of sh or, uh, hackle. And I'm gonna size that up. That looks pretty good, it's about a size 12. Okay, so I've peeled off a pretty generous amount of stem here 
And when I tie it in, again, I'm going to tie it in on the far side so that the shiny side is facing out. So if I tie it in that way, and then I can kind of hold it out of the way when I start to wrap that, um, the shiny side will be facing forward like we want. What do we say? Natural? Natural hair's ear for the head? And this dubbing is a little bit different from the snowshoe foot dubbing. It has a little bit of Antron mixed into it. It's really good stuff. So on this one, you're going to make this, uh, the, the front part of the stimulator, quite a bit buggier. So I'm not going to worry about dubbing it down super hard. I'm going to leave a little bit of room for a head here. So you see how that's tapered down nicely? That's about how you want a stimulator. And now you just wrap your hackle through that. And as you can see, the thicker head allows me to use a smaller hackle. I don't have to use a size 8, and I still get a little bit more bulk out of it. So if you want a hot spot up at the head with your thread, you can uh, leave a little bit of space there, but I, I wrap my hackle all the way forward. I'm just going to pull some of those little fibers back. Most of those are little dubbing stragglers, so that's all right. And uh, that's pretty much it. But you can see that that just has a really buggy profile. It's not quite as slim and streamlined as a normal stimulator because of that buggy dubbing underneath it. But uh, other things you can do to these, put, put a CDC underwing to them. You can add rubber legs. Uh, but one of my favorite things is to use biots for the tail. Anyway, that is the Hive is Stimulator and it catches fish. The end. Yeah.